Well, as teachers, students, parents prepare for what could be a shaky back-to-school season, to say the least, it might be worth reflecting on how far remote learning has come since the pandemic first started. Last year, it may have included some unmuted mics uh, and maybe some juggling between Skype and Zoom, but the tools there have now evolved quite a bit since, so much so that tech investment firm SoftBank uh, recently led a $105 million round in Class Technologies, a company adding uh, technology and learning tools directly to Zoom. And for more on that, happy to bring on the CEO and co-founder of Class Technologies, Michael Chasen joins us here alongside Yahoo Finance's Reggie Wade. Uh, and Michael, thanks for coming on here to chat. I mean, I, I should point out, you also found a Blackboard, so you know what you're doing here in the ed tech space. Uh, but this uh, this is an interesting way to kind of build on that. Talk to me about how uh, the growth has just been what I would seem what would seem to be nuts here in schools trying to figure this one out. It, it certainly has been incredible growth. You, you, we have now had hundreds of thousands of teachers and millions of students around the world that all have been forced to move their courses online during this pandemic. And yet the only tool they have to be successful with doing that is Zoom, which is a great tool for meetings but it doesn't necessarily have all the things teachers need to really bring that physical classroom experience online. So we invented class to add teaching and learning tools to Zoom. Michael, Reggie Wade here with a majority of students in this country going back to school in person. Does that change the nature of your expansion plans? Well, uh, certainly our product is great if schools have to replace their in-person physical education with fully online education. But the truth is that a lot of schools today have both. They're both allowing students to meet in person and have classes online. Almost every college or university in the United States has an online class or online degree or program. In fact, if you're a student now going back to college, you might attend two or three of your classes in person and take one or two classes online. The big change is that now these students expect there to be a bigger synchronous component of that online education. So schools are looking to deploy Zoom and class for Zoom even more uh, now that they've gone back to school than they were uh, before the pandemic. Now, that's a little bit different for higher than in K-12. Certainly in K-12, a lot of schools are just starting to experiment with online learning technologies. Here in Montgomery County, they're actually creating a full virtual school for students to have an option to go to next year. So whereas in higher ed, online learning is a little bit more established. In K-12, this really, I think, gave them the push they need to start exploring online learning in a, in a more serious way. And uh, you know we have great technology to help uh, schools take that next step. Michael, what's the learning curve for this software when it comes to students and teachers, especially those younger students? <laughs> the younger students aren't the ones that are the problem. The students themselves are very familiar using Zoom, using online technology. Uh, we often find it's the teachers that have a little bit more of an uphill battle. But what's happened during the pandemic is that every single teacher got a crash course in teaching online and Zoom. So we've been able to put our technology in the hands of teachers and students, and they get it right away. There's no advanced training that's necessary. Not that we don't have a lot of online training that they can uh, go through, or we even take the time to uh, teach instructors and uh, uh, faculty of schools how to use the product. But a lot of them are able to sit down and use it right away because it's built on this standard Zoom interface that they've been using for the last year. Michael, how do you think the online learning experience evolves beyond what we've come to know as just these standard Zoom classes? I mean, we had the president of Arizona State University on earlier this week who was talking about a future in VR, that in the future classes will be taught in that way. Obviously, that's higher ed, but um, how do you improve the engagement? Well, actually, here we're taking almost a little bit of a step back. So I, I have three small children, and during the pandemic, they were all online with Zoom. And I saw the challenges that the teachers were having engaging uh, with the students. And I asked their teachers, I said, why are you having so much trouble engaging with the students on Zoom? And they said, look, Zoom is great for lectures and group discussions. But a lot of what we do in the physical classroom, you can't bring online. We, we take attendance, we hand out assignments, we give tests or quizzes, we communicate one-on-one -on -one with uh, the students. And so the idea behind class was to take those basic core skills, those things that the teachers did in the physical classroom, and bring them online. So what you can expect to see in the future is people using Zoom, but having the tools to be able to give a quiz or hand out an assignment or proctor an exam, just as they would in the physical classroom, they'll now be able to do that online. Now, all that being said, I do think in the future, there'll be uh, ways to incorporate technology, whether it's through uh, AI or gamification, 
that can even yep. further help teachers online. But I, I think we still have a ways to go before we get there. I mean, you got a ways to go, but just think about how quickly this has kind of started here. It's 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 surprising for me to look at, right? Because you guys launched in September of 2020, the pandemic hit later on there. Uh, you know, when we talk about uh, the timing of all this, I guess you launched after the pandemic hit. I'm mixing my years up because time means nothing to me anymore. But if you think about raising 105 million bucks and the valuation now, what, already crossing that 800 million marks, you're, you're closing in on unicorn status. I mean, just talk to me about the way you've been able to raise funding now as so much money in the VC side has kind of shifted to focusing in on exactly the problem you're trying to solve. Well, look, I think that's actually just representative of a lot of uh, investment funds recognizing both the opportunity that's in the ed tech sector, but as well as wanting to help out. Uh, our investors aren't people that are just about um, uh, helping to, to fund a startup. They're people that really care about education and want to make a difference. Look, we started this company just around 10 months ago. And since that time, we've been contacted by over 20,000 different uh, faculty at various institutions and administrators that are interested in using this technology because they recognize that it can be a real help to making their uh, faculty and teachers successful in uh, teaching and learning online. And so just to be able to respond to those 20,000 inbound leads, we needed to be able to staff up our company. Just uh, heck, since the beginning of the year, we've hired over 120 uh, new employees, bringing our total employee count to almost 200 people, um, a mix of both developers and account executives to help get this technology in the hands of the clients that need it. Michael, how has the working relationship been with Zoom? They were Yahoo Finance's company of the year in 2020, and they've just skyrocketed. So have they really been hands-on? Uh, Zoom is a great partner. First of all, they've really become this industry standard in a way to uh, meet online. Uh, we have a very close partnership with them, and we work with people throughout the company because they recognize, in fact, one of their top sectors is education. But at the same time, Zoom is moving to become more of a platform company. They want to make sure that they're Technology can be used and implemented in all these different areas. And we're a great example of someone that took their uh, software development kit, their SDK, and was able to build on top of it for a very specific purpose to make their product a great product for bringing classes online. So we're very happy with the partnership and Zoom has been incredibly supportive and is a great platform to develop on. Michael Chesson, Class Technologies CEO and co-founder. It's good to talk to you today. And our thanks to Reggie Wade too, for taking part in the conversation.